Just spend weeks of us tracking down everybody we can, trying to send out as many emails and make as many connections. The trip's just bananas. Because it is summer holidays, yeah. and it is 4th of July weekend, and it's Pride Week here. To where Maddie and I actually thought that our emails were broken. <laughs> we are like, no one surely, surely someone has tried to get back to us. What other emails well, did you want to send? Stanford, we have to get back to the guy at Stanford. A lot of moving chess pieces with no solid lead, really. Which is that's what we're doing. Anytime you come into a new place, it's like, oh, new acronyms and buzzwords and new positions for everybody. Fish stock analysis, what the hell? I don't know Have who funds made? them. Okay, all right, I wanna know business-wise what they've done. Global startup banking. We don't have any money to bank. So... <laughs> I got no dollars for you. <laughs> if you want to just give me dollars, then we're in. We research our people yeah. and we have a look at them and we try and be as prepared as possible. Yeah. But we'll still get in and be sideswiped sometimes and be like, oh shit. Like, yeah. Oh, that's what I, that means. Right. I have no, and then I, you've got to like change pegs. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Thank we're you. good. Thank you so much. <laughs> We know that the most successful founders know who they are and what they're doing and why they're doing it. Their life experience, whether it's their gender or where they were raised or the particular professional path they took before they founded a company, all of those things are what make them the right person to solve the problem. And tapping into that is what's going to make them successful eventually. And so it's about slowing down and recognizing that someone who approaches something differently is the biggest value add. How can I change what it's like for females in the industry? By being as successful as I am, I am changing it for females in the industry. Do you have any tips on how to sell without it feeling like a sell? If you're looking at it as a sell, I think you're gonna act like that. You change it as just a conversation. Hi, I'm Lauren Meyer, and I'm here with my co-founder, Madeline Green, who's over there. And we're from Altlet, which is providing a service to the 14 million research scientists from around the world. Every building we walk into, everyone wants to hear our ideas, which is so wonderful, and they all have incredible feedback and advice, but you can get overwhelmed. We always talk about resilience and recharging and what do we do, going to somewhere like Monterey Bay and, and being reminded of exactly why Lauren and I are doing what we're doing, but also just to take a break from everything as well and reassess, you know, everything. I'm speaking up what I'm putting down. I'm, I am snacking what you're packing. Are you deriving what I'm providing? <laughs> I'm about to hit this bookshop up in a big way oh, or the gift store. Present. Oh my god, tentacles. We're flirting with the tentacles. Can we have several of us? Going back to an aquarium and being immersed in the world that we love so much reminds us of what we're doing and why we're doing it, more importantly. And so I'm so grateful for the advice and for what we've been able to become and learn. But it never sat with us 100%. At the end of the day, turning around and reflecting on all of this, we go, okay, Here's all the advice and we'll use it to the best of our abilities, but we'll also use it in line with our values. And when you go into companies like Google and Facebook and all of these big ones that go, you have to instill your culture from day one. This is day six months in, you know, yeah, seven months in. Ages yeah. ago. <laughs> like what is going on? Like shift it, make it work somewhere else because this is not how you want to do it. But it's not about what you can build, it's what you're passionate enough to actually create and what you want the world to look like with that company existing. I think it's so big, it's beyond what we can maybe understand and comprehend that what it can do. And if yeah. it can help little like 13 year old girls that want to be shark scientists <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it enables them in ways then shit, we've done our job tenfold and all that sacrifice is worth it. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah. <sighs> Wait, let uh, me, it's if the you... wind. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make that excuse? Okay. Oh. 
So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, cheers. 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 I just get the sense that you're so much more comfortable with where yeah, you're yeah. going and so, so much, much like, more better. passionate about it. It like, was mm. hard when we did the math and it was like, oh, you mean you're saying no to a $43 million market? Like, that's a lot. But so, I think for Maddie and I, like, that's a non negotiable. Just makes our soul about, feel happy. We'll make it work any other way. You know, we've spent all this time in the accelerator learning how to pitch and learning how to um, pitch better. <laughs> and, and, you know, <laughs> you and mean at 1 30 at night, you know, you <laughs> totally change your pitch. She was like, Okay, After let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, so we, it can be really easy to intellectualize or if I pitch in the right words with the mm. right hook and the right thing, yeah. then I'll nail that deal. Yeah, we're not there yet and we don't really know what we're doing, but um, we know enough <laughs> to know that we can't go in and be like, oh, and this is our pitch because we've got to sit down and be able to have a conversation and be it's like, our problems genuine. and your yeah. problems are the you same. Just meet someone, chat yeah. with them, and hope that that leverages. Why do you think that something like this hasn't been started already? Most Australian companies, the market in Australia is too small to matter. So it's like a test bed to come here. Your case, I don't think that's true. I just think that it's a little too early for you to be concerned about growth versus actually making something that people are willing to pay money for. If you fail with the consumer, you're out of the game. You're out of the game. If you are thinking about the US market, this is like golden. Good afternoon. Hi, Howard. I'm Lauren Meyer. Hey, nice Lauren. to meet you. Maddie Green. Hey, nice Maddie. to meet you. Uh, so I think of it as a bit like a marketplace of a nerdy gum tree that allows scientists yeah. to source. Or a nerdy Craigslist. And, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Craigslist. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. to source and share tissues. I heard you write sharks. Yeah, sharks. Yes, okay. okay. we are all right. shark scientists. <laughs> okay, all right. I was just digesting that. No, okay. it's fine. That's okay. <laughs> This isn't my specialties, but I assume that there's not a lot of people who have who, who are ahead of you in this game yet. Uh, it's in. It's been over two months just, now, yeah, just about two um, months. and we're in. We've got users from 25 different countries, uh, and we've got over 600 samples from. 600 uh, samples from how many labs? From how many labs is it? Oh. Probably like 12 different yeah. labs. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of the more interesting number. Are you going to overcome a stigma that you did not directly collect the sample that you're using in your research? You guys obviously have to build out the whole storage management transfer structure, or no? no? no. To ask the obnoxious VC question, like, what's so? What's the revenue? Yeah. Like the business building look like? When they got it, they like were like, whoa! Yeah. And you could see the <laughs> light bulb go, and it was like, yes, we're in, like you know, now we can start to have those high level chats because they get the problem. You're actually fulfilling a demand that's not even about the sample. There's this secondary effect that's yeah. actually going to become more powerful that incentivizes people to share, which is really intriguing. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually you become like the registry for all scientifically robust raw materials that people need to study. Yes, we can, yes. So that is part of the end goal. In the meantime, it's really about growth hacking and yeah. getting people together to communicate about what they need. What would you want to see if we're coming back and, and hoping to raise and six to eight months, you know, what are the key things you like, yeah. that you worry about? Well, we'll talk more and, and we can go from there. Thank Wonderful. you so Thank much. Thank you so much, we really appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. So those are the relationships we came here to build and to be able to start fostering those, uh, you know, is invaluable. Like I'd say there's two or three conversations we've had, one of which was, you know, speaking with the investor that's worked previously within that scientific collaboration space it was a, a huge win. I'd say probably win of the week. So when we do get a win, yeah. um, that requires a dance party to occur. We have little five minute dance parties, which are pretty yeah. fun. Um, no one's looking. Oh, no one's looking. <laughs> it's usually what it curtails. It's a little bit goofy. Before, I've always had one goal, and before I got there, I'm, I'm thinking about the next goal, and I think through the startup journey, I've learned to actually be in the present and actually enjoy everything. Very much living the startup dream. There's that sense of having to prove, prove that I have a place here. When I turn around and look back on this in five, 10, 20 years time, this is what I can show my kids I did, and I did it for them. It feels now as though Banjo Maps has taken on a life of its own despite me, which is an amazing feeling. I don't regret a thing, like this has just taken it to a whole new level. Getting to the end of the program, that's really still just the beginning of Vet Chat. I feel that I now have a healthier relationship in Neighbourlytics. We've got to move beyond the individual and look at the outcome.
I believe that we can change city making. You regret the things you don't do, not the things you do. If I can do it, it's certainly possible for somebody else and it just really is that first step. Doing things that are out of the box, the courageous, that are risky, that are things that nobody else would do, that will determine our success. None of the founders here would be able to do what they do if they weren't really diverse, complex, innovative people. You know, some people seem to think you get to success and you stop, so therefore you stop doing what you're doing. But I'll keep climbing, I'll keep doing what I can to help the world.